Hello everyone, welcome back to Embertronics. If you see our previous video, we have created a simple bootloader and application. So in that bootloader, we are just calling the application. So whenever the bootloader loads and it starts running, it will call the application, that's it. But in this tutorial, we are going to see how to update the application using the bootloader. Let's get started. First, we need to design the bootloader. If you see this, here I have put the flow diagram of our bootloader. In this demo, we are going to use UART3 for the data transfer. So we'll come one by one. So take the first block. So here we are starting the bootloader. After that, it is transmitting G. Then we have to receive the R from the host. If we have received R, then host wants to update firmware application. If we don't receive R, then we have to check the attempt count. Basically, in this example, I have set 100 as a maximum count. So, if it is not reached maximum count, again it will transmit G and wait for R. So, this process will be happening for 100 times. If you received R, then it will come to block number 5. First, this STM32 will transmit Y. So, host machine will receive that Y and it will transmit 1 byte data. So, in this block, we have to receive 1 byte data. After that, the ho I mean STM32 has to transmit X and host machine will transmit another 1 byte. So, at this block, we have received 2 bytes. So, using these 2 bytes, we can get to know that application size. See, these yeah, entire 4 blocks are to get the application size. Okay, once we get the application size, then STM32 needs to send the Y to the host machine. So then host machine will send another one byte. Then STM32 will send X and host machine send another one byte. So here we have received one byte, sorry, two bytes. So we'll have to check whether we have received the block data or entire application data. In this demo, we have configured block size as a one kilobytes, 1024 bytes. Okay, if we did not receive 1024, we'll have to go to this process again and we'll have to receive all the entire 1024 bytes because in this flash, flash is divided into multiple pages. Each page is 1 KB. So that's why we have divided that block as a 1204 bytes. So once we receive 1 KB, then we are writing that entire block to the flash memory. Then we will have to check whether we have received all the data or not. If we have received all the data, then we can run the new application because already we have written that new application to the flash memory, right? So we can simply run that application. If you don't receive all the data, again, we have to go to this process and we will have to receive the entire data, then come back here. So it's quite simple. Okay. But if you see our another tutorial, if you see previous tutorials, for example, we have posted bootloader tutorials for STM32 F7 also. If you see this series, we have designed the bootloader, just let me open that tutorial. So here we have designed the bootloader in a different way. So if, I mean, let me open that flowchart. Ah, see here. So this is a bootloader part and this is the application part. Okay. So bootloader will start. It has button to check that whether we want to update the OTR or not, read the reboot cost. This process is little bit complicated. Okay. Because since the STM32 F7 has more memory, we can accommodate any size of code. Okay. So I just did something like, I mean, if you see this next post, I have created a packets like OTA starts, OTA end, header command. So I have created multiple commands. Okay. Uh, let me show you that also. Okay. One second. I think that will be in the next part. See here, the communication is something like this. 
so host and the html of 7 it will send the ota start command and it responds ota header and responds ota data and responds at the end it will send ota end and response so this is some different logic and different design okay but if you see this concept we are not going to use any separate command like ota start ota end commands but simply we will use simple transactions like it will send y and that will send one byte it will send the x and that will send one byte so like this these are like pretty simple to understand so if you want that logic you can just follow these tutorials this stm32 f7 tutorials if you want to this logic we can do this also i am requesting you to learn both the concepts because we can also create new new concepts to update the firmware or application right okay we'll see the code so if you see this i have added one new uart for data transfer i here i'm using user 3 for data transfer this two uart 1 and pc 13 has been enabled already from the previous tutorials and generate the code then if you see here uh, these are all auto generated okay so here yeah so this is the code that i have added now firmware update will go inside that function if you see here so there is another function that I am calling your write loop. Here I am toggling the GPIO whenever it sends the character G. Okay. So here I am transmitting the TX which is character G. As per our design, it has to transmit G, right? So I am transmitting G and waiting for the data from the host. It is checking whether it has received data or not. If it has received data, then it will trigger the firmware update otherwise it is checking count is reached 100 or not if it is not reached then again it will transmit uh, g and it waits for r so this process will be continuing for 100 times then let's assume that it has received the data see it has to ask the application size right so if you see the flow chart it has come here so it has to send y see it is transmitting y and it is waiting for one byte from the host then it is transmitting x and it is waiting for one byte from the host so once it has received two bytes then it is find calculating the application size by combining this both the bytes that it has received see we are here now so once we have received application size we, we have to get the data from that host machine so here i just put while one uh, here it is checking for block size if you have received block size then it has to write the data to the flash memory if the application if whatever the data that we have received is uh, equal to or more than application size then that means we have uh, written all the data to the flash then we can break it from here now we are here so transmit y so it will transmit y and receive one byte from the host and it will transmit x and receive one byte from the host see here i am transmitting y and x because you can transmit any other character or any other things and here I am just adding to the block and another byte to the block. Okay. And I am incrementing the current application size to bytes. So it, it will be happening something like this. The loop will be going like uh, what, until it received. Once it received the maximum block size, then it will write to the flash memory. So once it, it has reached, then that means we have received all the data. So we can exit from here. See, uh, if you go to that function, yeah, if you see here, what so it will exit from here, then we are calling go to application function. This function we have discussed already in the previous tutorial, so nothing new here. I hope you are clear in this code. Now we can see the PC code. I mean, I, we have created one PC application to transmit the data from the PC to STM32. So we'll see that code now. See here, I am getting that COM port number 
and binary file okay i am opening that com port here i am opening that binary file and here i am doing those file operations like getting the file size those things that i am doing i am reading that entire file application binary and storing into that uh, this buffer and see here it is waiting for ota start right so that means whenever the stm32 starts it will send the g so pc application has to wait for that g okay so it it has to wait for until it received g once it will receive g then it will transmit r then it has to send the firmware size so here i am doing uh, transmitting i mean i am waiting for y and sending the one byte of application size and here i am waiting for x and sending another byte of the application size okay so till here i have transmitted the entire application size okay after that so if you see this for loop i am transmitting the application data see here i am waiting for x and the transmitting one byte here i am waiting for x uh, i am sorry here it is y and waiting for one byte send, sending one byte here it is x and i am sending another byte so this process will continue until that the maximum application data once we transmitted everything then we are closing that file and exiting from the main function okay now we can see the demo first let me erase the entire flash see i have erased the entire flash if you see this address everything will be fffff okay now i am going to build the bootloader so i have built the bootloader now i'm going to flash it so let's write it open that terra term see here bootloader version 1.0 has started no data received for firmware update kona jump to application now there is no application so it is staying invalid application halt okay now we have flashed that uh, bootloader and application is not there this is a com port that i have opened let me build the application pc tool this is a command that to build the application so it has uh, built the application as named as etx oti app okay now let me run that uh, pc tool uh, this is the command let me copy it okay see it is opening com14 and opening binary file is application.bin the file size is 10 kb around 10 kb uh, waiting for ota start because here the bootload is not sending g let me press the reset button see if you see this uh, it is receiving all the blocks so gonna jump to application application v0.1 has been started if you see this green led it is blinking in one second delay right so now the host machine has sent the data and stm32 has been received the data and it is up updated that application i'm going to press the reset button again see this less than 0 0.1 no data received from for firmware update gonna jump to application application version 1 has started so now so it will continuously send that g for 100 times if it did not receive anything from that host machine so it will not uh, op i mean do that firmware update so instead it will call the application i hope you have learned something new today the source code of this tutorial has been uh, posted here F i mean i have posted the web version also uh, okay it is loading okay so i have posted this web version of uh, of this tutorial you can always go and see that one uh, if you want to see see that uh, source code please uh, take the source code from the github so here i have the all the code source code see bootloader bootloader is there application is there pc tool is there so please get the source code from the github
if you liked our video please share it with your friends also subscribe to our youtube channel keep supporting us thank you see you in our next video